chat with you more, but right now we're going to another item, and that is the interview with Lee Weiner, the famous American still photographer who photographed Marilyn. So it's off to the West Coast at Los Angeles now, and this interesting interview, I think you'll agree with Lee Weiner. Lee, what was Marilyn Monroe like? That's like asking how high is up. That's a beautiful answer. Yeah, that's a beautiful answer. I just wondered what the feeling was between you and... Well, maybe she was difficult as a subject. I'm sure some subjects have been in your life and others not. But I'd just love to know what your impressions are. Well, I, I can give you my impressions, but I certainly can't tell you what she was like. I, I don't think anyone knows that. Um, I am fascinated by the morbidity of her death. Mm -hmm. I mean... Um, she was used probably more than most wash rags for those families that use wash rags. I mean, here was a woman, from an observer's point of view, I think a very intelligent woman, far more so than most of the believe, and yet she was worshipped for the wrong reasons. No, I, I, I don't think there are, I don't know anyone who really understood Marilyn Monroe, including myself. I mean, uh, a brilliant woman, I mean, you will be you would become a very wealthy man if you could find a photograph of Marilyn Monroe with her mouth open. She knew that sex was from here to there. I mean, below there, it's all the same. It's the mouth and the eyes. And Monroe knew this. Right there, I mean, Tom and I, you know, Tom Kelly. She she I guess became famous with the counter picture that Tom Kelly took. Tom Kelly's a great photographer. I mean, I think Tom Kelly was my, well, maybe one of the finest view camera photographers in the United States. And all of a sudden, his, his, his capacity as a great photographer was ignored because all of a sudden he was, now he was a cheesecake photographer. Yeah. And I think so many things surrounding Marilyn Monroe were so shallow. Not because of the people involved, but because of the shallow perceptions of the public. Perception. And you see, uh, when I worked with Monroe, she was an extremely pleasant woman. Ah. And I, um, I'm sure there was malice in her death, the same way there was much malice in her life. You had something more on Monroe, which we talked about earlier, and there's another impression or a few that you'd like to convey, I'm sure. Yes, I'm one of the few photographers you'll ever, I think you'll ever meet, who did not permit his Monroe pictures to be used by everybody when she died. I, 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 I didn't put him into big collections. I haven't let him be seen in galleries. I'm very careful of the few images I have of Monroe. But when she died, Dick Stolley, who, as I mentioned earlier, was an editor for life, he asked me to go, and I went over here to Brentwood, cover the funeral. Uh, actually, the body, it was, uh, it was, she, was, she died in her, her house in Brentwood. And there were about 12, 15 other photographers. And there was nothing, we couldn't even, we couldn't even get near the place. And we were in front of the, outside on the street. Yeah. And after about an hour and a half, they brought her out in a black rubber sack and put her in a black van, which was a coroner's wagon. And I called Stolly at home <coughs> Sunday morning and he said, you think you get anything, anything different? I said, well, what we have is nothing. But I said, let me think about it. And at midnight, I went to a liquor store here in Los Angeles. And I bought three bottles of scotch and drove down to the down the city hall. I went into the coroner's office. And uh, no one stopped me. I went into the coroner's room. And there were three guys on duty. And I said, is uh, Louie there? He said, uh, Louie. I said, Louie Burton. Oh, he hasn't worked here. And I think he was transferred two or three weeks ago. I didn't know Louie Burton. I didn't know you got out of my head. And he said, no, I think he's transferred. And I said, oh, shucks. I said, and I looked a couple of cameras over my shoulder. And I had a paper bag, brown paper bag with three bottles of scotch, Chevelle's Regal. <laughs> and I said, oh, nuts, we were going to go to a party together. So I put it down. I said, hey, you guys want a drink? <laughs> so my watch, he says, well, in five minutes I'm off duty. I'll have one. I'll open a bottle of scotch. And then the guy, the guy brought in some glasses. There were three of them in the coroner's office. And I said, um, I guess they have her down in Santa Monica. No, 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 it's right here. And that whole wall was lined with refrigerator-like doors where they kept the bodies. And she's there. The guy said, no, she's right there. I thought that would be in Santa Monica. No, she's right there. I think it was 33 or 37. You want to see her? I said, yeah. The guy said, wait a minute, wait a minute. One of the guys said, hey, hey, 
You ever seen a dead body? I said, come on, I used to work for the Times, I used to work for the magazines. Yeah, I've seen probably almost as many dead bodies as you guys. Okay. And he went over and I pulled out the drawer. And I took a picture of her toe with a tag on it. And then they covered by a sheet. And they pulled the sheet off. Oh, my God. And I took more pictures. But it was at eye level. I couldn't see the face. I was at eye level. Well, obviously, the pictures were never used. Obviously, they never used. I have them. And I've been interrogated by the district attorney in Los Angeles about them. But a very interesting thing happened. About eight weeks, two to three months after she died, a very famous gossip columnist in Hollywood, Hedda Hopper, came out with a front page story in the Los Angeles Times. Marilyn Monroe poison murder. And the story went on to say, according to Hedda Hopper, that she was murdered by cyanide. Well, just about that time, I was in the middle of taking a medical exam. I take a routine medical examination, you know, every year or two. And my doctor, Morris Wilburn, a heart specialist, he was, uh, we were talking, I said, Morris, what do you look like if you've been poisoned by cyanide? He said, what do you mean? I said, well, how, how does the body look? Well, he said, if the cyanide was ingested over a long period of time, two, three, four weeks, it's pretty difficult to determine as far as looks are concerned. But if the body is given a sudden jolt of cyanide, then they will be, they'll look like a frozen cube of ice. You will see little streaks of blue running through the body. And he said, why do you ask? I said, no reason. Well, there was a reason. Uh, that's how Monroe looked to me when I saw her.